Hello everyone and you're all very warm welcome to this tutorial for the PMDG Boeing 737 for Microsoft Flight Simulator. I am Emmanuel and I am a real-world Boeing 737 pilot and a member of the PMDG tech team. The software you're seeing in this video is still in a beta state, so bear with me for it probably having some minor issues that you might see, but this is totally known to PMDG and they're working on an update as we speak. So, in this video I'm going to cover the full approach briefing as we do it in my airline. And if you are not interested in the full version, please at least have a look at the abbreviated version that I've covered in a separate video, because there is still some settings in the airplane that you want to do during the briefing. And um, that's basically determining what, which flap setting you're going to use and setting the auto brake. And you do want to do this. So even if you're not interested in this particular video, just have a quick look at the other video. That's not too long either in order to decide um, which flap setting and auto brake you want to use. Now, in this longer version, we are starting off again with the threats for the arrival. So I'm not going to cover that topic extensively here. Just have a look into my uh, departure briefing video and you will find some thorough explanation on the threats part of the briefing. Now as we're moving on, um, we're going to cover the descent part. So looking at the descent page here, it's 250 knots below flight L100 for the reason why I recommend you to check my uh, cruise and descent preparation video where I've explained it. So 250 below 100, we check through the forecast, made sure everything is filled in. Usually you'd want those uh, wind speeds here to be filled in as well. However, since we're using standard weather and the wind is basically calm, I have left them blank. We check the fixed page, made sure we have uh, the landing runway set with the rings at 10 miles three times the cruise altitude and either four or five miles depending whether we are in visual or instrumental meteorological conditions. From here on we are heading up to the legs page where we will check that um, our star is actually correct. So we're starting off with the star and then we'll go through it waypoint by waypoint and check the tracks and distances between all these. You can use the plan mode of the navigation display for that. And then step through it here, make sure all the restrictions and everything from the charts is in. The chart you see here is a Jefferson chart currently provided to the flight and community by Navigraph. Once you have checked that all the waypoints are correct, you will go on to the ILS page. And we're on a chart here, 11 3, effective 8 October. Make sure that the ILS frequencies are correctly set so that. Sorry for that. Um, that's triple 1.35 active on the number one radio and on the number two radio. And for the missed approach, we also have Dublin VOR tuned here on 114.9 or on both sides. Final approach tracks set at 278 on both sides, and um, the minimums is set to 402 feet. Finally, make sure the landing elevation is correct. Airport elevation is 242 feet, and we do have 250 set as the land alt up here. From here, check your final approach fix. That's going to be a max F here in 2,500 feet. We have a three degree glide path going down to the minimum of 402. Make sure that um, the final approach fix is in, in the FMC. And at the last waypoint before the runway waypoint, the airplane is going to insert a restriction of uh, the VRF plus five knots. You do want to change this, make it 180 knots or less so that um, we don't fly all the way through the final approach in our landing configuration since that's just a big waste of fuel and if you're flying online you will also hinder all the aircraft behind you who are probably going to be faster than you. Next check the missed approach that's straight out to Gannett over here maximum 3000 feet and maximum 220 knots for a right hand turn to Dublin VOR climate of 5000. Once you've checked this Check the minimum fuel you need at the destination, 1.9. We're going to arrive there with 2.1, so that's 200 kilos extra. That's about five minutes of flying that we are carrying on top. Now, do note that while I'm in the pause simulator here, this thing is still using up fuel. So, actually, when I've paused the sim, we've had about uh, 3,000 kilograms of fuel in the tanks. So, I'm just going to put this in here. 
so that we have our 3,000 kilos again. So remember, we needed 1.9, we have 2.4, so that's about 500 kilos extra at the weight we are at currently. That goes to almost five, uh, almost 15 minutes. Basically, 737 is using about 200 kilos per five minutes of uh, flying time. We're going to use up uh, three point, uh, sorry, 0 0.7 tons of fuel, 700 kilos. So that makes the landing weight 53.9. I'm going to put this in here. Landing flap selection, that's greatly going to depend on uh, the conditions. I will do a separate tutorial where I'm covering the virtual performance tool. That's basically an exact copy of the Boeing onboard performance tool that we are using in the real airplane. I have already covered it in my um, departure briefing videos, so I very much can recommend a look there. And I will do a more extensive video on that as well. In case you don't want to use any performance tools, basically flap 30 or flap 40 is going to give you a slight speed difference here. Um, three knots in the 700, in the 800 is going to be difference of eight knots. And um, looking at this, usually if we had turbulent conditions or if the runway is long, we're going to use flap 30. Uh, and if it's not turbulent, then, or rather, if it's not turbulent and if the runway is short, you can consider use, the use of flap 40, which is going to reduce your um, landing run. So... We're looking at Dublin here, runway 28 left, um, that's this one, and generally we are aiming for minimum runway occupancy time, so Sierra 5 is a good exit for us to consider. You have a scale down here that you can use to determine the distance to Sierra 5, and it's around 1,700 meters. Now, using flaps 30 and an auto brake setting of level 3, you would usually need about 1,600, 1,700 meters of runway. Using auto brakes 2, it's 2 to 300 meters more, and auto brakes 1 is again another around uh, 300 meters of landing run more. So flaps 30, auto brakes 3 is going to cover us fine on this one. Quickly going to unpause the simulator to set my auto brakes here, so don't be surprised if all of a sudden sound picks up and the engines are reacting here. Um, that's just due to the pausing of the simulator. So flaps 30, auto brakes 3 is going to make, make us vacate at Sierra 5, that brings us to the taxi part of our briefing. We're going to taxi by Sierra and Whiskey 1. We'll have to cross the active runway 34. Then we'll go on to the parking chart here. Um, the Ryanair terminal is basically up here, Pier 1 in Dublin. So we'll come over at Whiskey 1, cross the runway, and then we'll probably go via Foxtrot Outer, Link 5, to some of the gates down here at Pier 1. Now this is the lengthy version with a lot of explanation. Now I'm just going to show you what it's going to look like when you do the briefing in real time. So bear with me, I'm just going to delete the um, flap speed restriction here and I will show you how we are doing the briefing for this flight. So threats for the arrival, we're arriving at Dublin, that's a very busy airport also, it's got a complicated taxi system and the air traffic controllers are sometimes speaking rather quickly. So we'll just take it slow, make sure we know where we're going, make sure we understand our instructions and um, just make sure that we're keeping the general overall picture here. Also something to keep in mind is in Dublin there's a lot of Ryanair traffic so we want to make sure that we're not confusing our call sign with anything else. So our call sign today is Ryanair 7 Echo Golf and we are going to carefully listen out to that and if there is any doubt we're going to confirm with ATC. For the descent page we've got 250 knots below flight level 100. The forecast page is filled in with the exception of the descent speeds as briefed already earlier on. And the fixed rings are around runway 28 left, 10 miles, 4 miles. For the arrival we have the Baxo 1 Lima arrival over here. Uh, actually sorry it's the Baxo 2 Lima arrival of course. That's on a chart 10-2 Foxtrot effective 8th October. If on of equipment fails or accuracy within one mile cannot be maintained, inform ATC as soon as possible and radar vectoring will be provided. Out of one is required. An ATC may request specific speeds for accurate spacing, comply with speed adjustments as promptly as feasible within operational constraints. So we do want to do that. Speed limit is 250 below 100. 
And for vertical planning information, pilots must inform ATC if unable to comply with any level of speed constraint. Actual descent clearance will be as directed by ATC. Warning, GPWS terrain may encounter for aircraft which are exceeding the standard speed restrictions while at or below 5,000 feet in the vicinity of terrain south of Dublin Airport. Leading on to the route, we have Baxo below flight level 100, that's over here. And we're going to cross-check this with a navigation display now. Hope you're still able to see something like this. So back to so at level 100, from there we're flying on 275 degrees, 5.7 miles to Atsis. Then it's the left hand turn, 231 degrees, 5.1 miles to Keraf. Keraf is a maximum of 230 knots and at flight level 80. From there we're doing a left turn onto 129 degrees, 5.7 miles to Kogax. Now that is a little different here because we are slightly overshooting the turn here. So you can expect... Um, some different tracks and distances if you're overshooting the turn on the navigation display. Anyway, from there at the right and turn 151, 5.7 miles to Coulomb, and all these restrictions are maximum 230 knots and flight level 80. That's the right turn 173, 5.7 miles, waypoint 841, right 195, 5.7 miles, waypoint 815, and then 216, 5.3 miles to waypoint 816. From there at the right and turn 317 degrees and 15 miles to Latmo. 3 to 5 in here, that's due to the turn slightly overshooting, and 17.5 again due to the turn. On to Latmo, Latmo maximum 180 knots and above 3000 feet. From there we join the ILS approach, Romay 28 left, chart 11-3 from the effective uh, 8th October. Frequencies 111.35, active on both radios, final approach tracks 278, set active on both courses, and the MSA is 2,400 in the north, 4,000 in the south of Dublin VOR. Max F, 2,500 feet, that is in here as well, and we have a 3 degree glide path going down to minimums of 402 feet that's set on my side, and I'm just going to set this on your side as well. Four and two feet. Okay, for the missed approach then, we're climbing on the Romwe track straight out to Gannett. Oops, sorry, that was the wrong button. So on the Romwe track to Gannett, and Gannett maximum at uh, 3,000 feet, and then it's going to be a right-hand turn, maximum 220 knots. We've got the restriction here at Dublin. Uh, join the radial 278, inbound to Dublin VOR, climb to 5,000 feet. So that's Dublin VOR, climb to 5,000 feet. Some of you will notice that this is not radial 278, and that's correct. The um, PMGG does currently not support the radial inbound. That's something that's going to be added with a later update. All right, we are arriving. Oh, sorry, we need a minimum of 1.9 tons of fuel to divert to Belfast. That's just up to the north here. You can quickly check it on the charts. Belfast is roundabout up here. So we see some terrain going up to 4,000 feet, so anything in the region, some 8,000 feet, is going to keep us safe on our diversion to Belfast. So 1.9 tons we need. We arrive with 2.3, that's 400 kilos extra, that's around about 10 minutes of extra fuel. We're burning 600 kilos, and that's a landing weight of 53.8. 53.8. We're going to use flaps 30 for this, using auto brakes 3. And that's going to make us need about 1,600 to 1,700 meters runway. So we'll be able to vacate Sierra 5, then taxi by Sierra and Whiskey, cross runway 3-4. And on the other end side here, we're going to go via the outer taxiway, Link 5, and then somewhere on the 120s over here at uh, Pier 1 is where we are going to park. Do you have any questions or suggestions for this video? I meant to say for the briefing, but for the video, of course, as well because this completes our descent and approach briefing. So if there is anything that uh, you want to add, or if you have any questions, feel free to post them in the comment below, and I'm trying my best to reply to all questions as soon as possible. This completes our descent briefing, so now let's on head on for the next tutorial, where we are actually going to cover the descent. Thank you very much for your attention, and see you all next time.